Hi, and welcome to this new episode of Dreamers and Doers, where I interview people who follow their passion and use it to make the world better. And I think that's you, Aaron. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much, Alex. Appreciate the kind words. Happy to be here. <laughs> well, thanks. And for me, honestly, books completely changed my life, whether it's audiobooks or reading. The past three years, I've started reading a lot, probably around um, maybe like four, four books a month. I'm so passionate and I've just released my own book, The New Wave. So that's how we got in touch. And as usual, uh, I like to start with my guest story. So you have a, a podcast where you interview everyday authors and you're passionate about books. So how did you get into also writing your own book and doing a podcast around that? Yeah, so I... I get started writing my own book and I published uh, my book early 2019 and to keep a long story short I got really sick I uh, I knew that um, I didn't want to take the pre prescribed medicines for that and I, I took some very holistic approaches to heal myself uh, it was you know a chronic disease that supposedly incurable and I, uh, I took those steps and in less than a few months, I, I was totally symptom free to have been five, oh, over five years. Um, so that, that was my, my journey that led me to say, hey, uh, what if this were to happen to any one of my kids? And I have four kids now. So uh, I really started from that place of wanting to just help them if they were ever to get anything similar they say some what i have is genetic and so if by chance they had run into this later and and or just the the book not only had the the steps that i took nutritionally and you know from a health perspective uh it was a lot of mental health as well where i i had a big mindset shifts that i had to take to overcome the stress in my life to to really uh, change how I looked at the world and th that's what I write about and that's what I wanted to pass down onto my kids if by chance they were to ever run into that or just so they knew hey what was dad thinking at this time in his life and maybe it could help them um, so I guess from there I said hey I, I wrote my book and I thought uh, I, I, one quote I have in my book that really stood out was uh, by Ben Franklin and he he says if you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing about. And that's kind of become my, my mission now to not just write books. I, I think I, I like to combine that and say, say or I say and. And I, I like to do big things and help others um, and, and leave my legacy as well. And a big part of that is helping others leave theirs. So that's that's a big part of why I started writing books and helping other people do that. Cause you know, everybody doing that can have much more impact than just me doing it myself. I, I completely believe that. Um, so that's how I, I got started and it's been an, a great ride over the last uh, several years. Uh, that's, that's super cool. And I'm always interested also in how media is getting decentralized, right? So it used to be uh, you'd have like a few channels on TV, being at the media and now everyone with social media can become a media. Um, we both have our own podcasts and yeah. it's the same with books. Now with self publishing, it's become easier and easier to have your book. So you have plenty of uh, people who kind of average people who can start writing books. And I find that's uh, super exciting. Yeah. yeah I, I think the, from interviewing so many authors, and I know you asked about me getting into interviewing authors, I guess, cause I can touch on that, but from interviewing so many of them, I've talked to several that, uh, you know, there's, there's this divide between, hey, do I self-publish or do I go the traditional mm -hmm. route? And the thing that I've discovered is that everyone who said they've gone to the traditional route has taken them two to 10 years sometimes to really get their book out there. And I'm, I'm just a mm -hmm. huge believer that people need help right now. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm a huge fan of self-publishing because I really don't believe that the quality has to be any less, but you just have the platform to get your book out there quicker. And, and with today's publishing houses, really the, the marketing falls a lot on, on the individual, the author themselves, and mm. the publishing houses aren't helping like they used to. And they're really trying to only pick up people that already have an audience because they're placing a bet that, that their audience can already help them sell X number of copies and whatnot. Um, 
but yeah, okay. talking about podcasting, I really just got passionate about trying to help others because I, I launched my book and I, I did a lot. I, I spent a decent amount of money in marketing. I had a launch team. I did all these steps. And what was interesting is I didn't once, you know, I became a, in several categories, a, a bestseller on Amazon. You know, I, I had a, uh, over a couple dozen or a dozen or so uh, reviews, five star reviews. And I did what I thought mm. was the right steps from doing all the research and yep. nobody reached out to me and, you know, no podcast uh, hosts reached out to me, which I was surprised. And I didn't know if they would or not. And come to find out what I know now is that they're already so busy. A lot of them, they already have a lot of guests reaching out to them. But at the same time, I was like, hey, I felt passionate about trying to help other authors get their message out because people have spent so much time mm -hmm. and effort writing their books, right? As you know, Alex, yeah. and it, it it's a, some can be a monumental thing for people. And it's a huge accomplishment for anybody who does it. Um, actually, there's more uh, doctors, at least in the United States, than there are published authors. And, and so it's a big accomplishment. And I felt just compelled to try to help others get their story out. And I really focused on that self-help space. Cool. Well, now the person that I want to help is, uh, let's say, the listener who thinks about getting their book out yeah. and might feel a little bit overwhelmed. Um, can you share a little bit about the process just of having it published in the first place and maybe some great tips you would like to share interviewing so many authors? Sure. Yeah, so the the publishing process, I mean, the most of the work's going to go into, a lot of the work's going to go into writing your book, right? Figuring out what it is that you want to write, getting your mindset in a place to believe that you can actually do it. Because uh, I think I've talked to actual doctors and they're like, hey, I can't do this. You know, they, they've gone through 12 years of medical school and they're like, I don't think I could write a book. And so mm. there's a lot of mindset that, that needs to happen, mindset shifts that need to happen to really did say, you, hey, I can do this. Did you get a bit of, um, I got a bit of the imposter syndrome, meaning yeah. like, oh, I'm not good enough to write a book, um, too young or whatever. Did you get that yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely felt that way. I, I, I felt more nervous even about what people might think of of it. And my, my book was very personal, very, uh, you know, I, I had to to put it all out there, I felt, mm. to really help people and, and just to, to help my kids, like I said, and, and, you know, I, I really put it all out there. Uh, and I was, I was really sick and uh, had to be vulnerable. And so I think books do that and you have to overcome that to, to really, and I think you can use my story as an example. You really, uh, a lot of the authors I've talked to, you really have to have that person um, you might want to help in mind. And obviously we're talking nonfiction here, but if you really have, the, you know, a thought that, hey, I could really help this person. Maybe this other person has gone through this same thing, mm -hmm. this uh, abuse or um, alcoholism or whatever these, I've inter interviewed so many authors that really have overcome some, something big in their lives. And uh, it doesn't always have to be that, right? Uh, but, but a lot of times, if you have that person in mind, can help you say, hey, well, the faster I can get it out there, the faster this person can receive the information and can help them. So that's, that's a big part of the journey of, of really getting your book. And obviously there's a lot of, you know, Hey, I got to have an outline. I I've got to uh, get a book cover made. And, and there's yeah. what's great, great about the book publishing world. Now the self-help space is there's so many people to help you through these things. And as far mm -hmm. as a book cover goes uh, there's great places like a hundred covers or 99 designs. You don't have mm -hmm. to be, you don't have to do everything. You don't want to do everything you want to focus yeah. on on getting your message out there. And even when it comes to writing a book, uh, one method I really recommend to people is to create your outline, actually record yourself speaking through your outline and then send it off to an editor to get their, your first draft because that first draft is really the most time consuming, the most daunting. And so if mm -hmm. you can send it to someone in your own words, what you've spoken, right? And they're just going to tweak it, make it, make it maybe more conversational. And, and I still think it stays very true to your, your, yourself, your content. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily having a ghostwriter write your book for you, right? Which, you know, is another way to do it. But I think uh, if you do that, then you can take it back, 
and you might have 80 to 90 percent of it done at that point and then you can fill in the gaps maybe you have some more quotes mm. you want to add or stories um, things to that nature uh, and then um, there's a, you know book editors that will just clean it all up format your book and, and of course you know some it doesn't really have to take the thousands of dollars um, that may have taken before with other uh, you know more more um, pub, traditional publishing and all that mm. um, yeah, I think for me it costs maybe it costs around two thousand yeah. dollars uh, between the book cover and the edition and the proofreading. I mean, probably a bit less. Yeah. So, how yeah. about you? Yeah, I mean, I I probably spent most of my money actually on the marketing pieces, and I bet I spent mm. less than fifteen hundred dollars on it total. Uh, okay. I was able to find uh, editors like on websites like Upwork, um, even, even Fiverr to do my book formatting, nice. and it, you know, was very, very affordable and they did a great job. Yeah. I thought. So those two sites nice. are definitely where I really recommend people to reach out for those types of services. I think that's the other big overwhelm for people, right? They think, okay, I got to write a book. I got to do all these things, but no, you really just need to be able to, to outsource some of these, these things. And you can focus on what's really, yeah you know passionate for you to write it mm. and so the other big piece and that's going to be really interesting for me as i'm uh, in it now is yeah. so i i did that you know um writing the book with the other authors getting the cover yeah. proofread so it's ready been on amazon and so at first we have a few authors and so like there's that momentum we did a launch party which was great and now in the past few days it's been like quite slow so i'm thinking hmm, how can i promote the book further a few things I did was put it in 10 categories where it's quite easy to rank bestsellers. So we were number yeah. one new release. I think we're not too far from being a bestseller in these categories that can help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you have uh, other tips, like choosing the keywords also? I, I, I think like, like being a book, yes. it's interesting because being a book in our head, books is like, you know, old style on bookshelves, but now it's become quite an SEO algorithm thing too, with people <laughs> searching on Amazon, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it depends on, that's a big part also of understanding and what I help people do in the beginning of the book writing process, you really need to understand, all right, what is the really the, the main goal of your book, you know, and uh, whether you want to just drive business from it or whether you just, whether you want to help others, I guess either way you want as many people as possible to read it, but they can have different uh, tactics as far as your, your titles go and, and whatnot. But once you've written your book and it's out there, regardless, I, I, I've had success in some of these things I'll, I'll share with now. And one, one author I interviewed was named, uh, his name is Mark Reclaw. And uh, he, if you look him up, um, he has a book. One of his books is uh, 30 days, change your habits, change your life. Uh, I believe that's the, the title. And uh, it's up there with Tim Ferriss's books and all that every, all the time, right? And I interviewed him and asked him about his marketing and like, how, how do you do that, right? And he talked about some of the, the, the older methods that used to work where, you know, you would get their sites that you can use to promote your book. And there's some bigger names that if you did get on there and there's millions of subscribers to those lists and you're getting mm -hmm. books get viewed and downloaded. Right. And so he knew about all these things and, and he had studied all the, the best marketing people that were doing marketing on Amazon, especially. And what it, what it came down to now for him is uh, Amazon marketing services. Um, so that's, that's been big for me and also for uh, other people that I've talked to, if you can dive into that and you know, there's, there's people that have some courses or uh, even some free courses that really can help uh, you understand what it takes. And there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot behind the scenes that you need to do to set up your book, but, and, and, you know, write a, a great, you know, sort of, uh, you know, you want to have a great description, you want to have a, a great book cover, you know, all these things make a difference in different stages of the selling process. But at the end of the day, uh, you can get your book in front of a lot of eyeballs for very, very, uh, cheaply with Amazon marketing services. So that's, so, so is that ads to using Amazon? Yep. Yep. Cool. Yep. So that's a, that's definitely something if you're not doing and you want to sell more books, that's probably the number one thing. Uh, okay. As far as paid marketing goes, uh, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't invest necessarily like in uh, Facebook marketing and, you know, the, the click rates are so high and, uh, you know, it, it, it's more of a lead generation path if you have back end services that you, mm. that you sell for higher, higher price. Yeah, a lot of people in marketing, they do that free book strategy. I'm thinking of uh, ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, but I've seen quite a bit. It's like you yeah. put up an ad on Facebook, be like, get my book for free. And then yeah. they say, just pay handling and shipping, which is usually like between 10 and $15. But then it's the beginning of a funnel for yeah. like coaching or more services. Yeah, they're never making any money off of those book sales. Yeah. A lot of people I follow, they might sell a book, get one book sale, say for $30. Yeah. And so they're losing money on the front end. Yeah. Um, because but, they have those programs down the line. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they, they have a better sales process on the back end to, you know, email automation and all that to get, nice. get their services sold. Um, yeah. So the other, the other big tip I have, um, and it's what's helped me and it's sort of something that I sort of picked up later. Unfortunately, I recommend doing this if you can, especially if you already have a book out there, um, you could, in your writing, maybe a second one, you already have some, maybe some credibility. Some podcasts may not uh, have you on there, but I would recommend podcasting and guest podcasting is the other big way. And that's, that's totally free. Mm. Um, it, it, it can cost you a little bit. If the method that I use, and I'll share this with you, that's something, uh, kind of a ninja trick that I've been using that's been working really well. Um, so just talking a little bit more about podcasting though, a lot of podcasts have, you know, huge subscriber lists, right. And, um, you know, some episodes get downloaded millions of times. There's, there's that many people downloading podcasts. So if you can get in front of that many eyeballs with a 30 mm. minute interview like this, right. Then, then it's huge. Um, it can be huge. And if you look at all the mainstream authors, I know we, we both like Tim Ferriss, for example, you mean yeah. he puts out a new book, he'll spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes to get on a podcast because he knows, Hey, that could be another, hundred books sold or whatever, right? That, that mm. might help push him over the line, propel him to become that book to become a New York times bestseller again or whatever. Yeah. Right. So that's, yeah. That's and there's, uh, that, there's that authority with podcasting to like, I know when I listen to someone on a podcast and he talks about his book, I'm like, okay, that person's an authority. It really makes me want to buy the book. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and if other people have already been listening to that show and they've heard other big name people or they, they just have respect for the host and then they, they're going to, you know, they already have an, like a, a liking to maybe the guest and automatically to want to buy their stuff, right? Um, so that's, that's the big trick. The, 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 the thing is, if you're just starting out, it might be a little overwhelming to say, hey, you know, how do I get on all these podcasts? How do I do this? And it does take work, right? You, you got to want to make that happen. And I, I shared a list with you, Alex, like that, that list took me a little work to get together. Right. And it's a list of over 800 self-help podcasts that have guests on their shows, essentially that, that have released a podcast in the last month mm -hmm. uh, episode. So that, that was a critical list that I've been using to help myself get on more shows. Um, and I've been rejected so many times to different shows and you just got to get over the fear of that happening first, right? You got to say, Hey, this is going to happen. No big deal. It's not probably a good fit for either of us move on. Right. And so that's one thing that you don't want to let stop you in your tracks and be like, Hey, this didn't happen. Um, but I, you do have to put a professional foot forward. I have like a one sheet. If you haven't heard that speaker one sheet, I, I put that together and it's just an easy, simple message. People don't want to, these podcast hosts are so busy, uh, like myself and probably you, Alex, mm. right? Like we don't have time to read a pair, you know, paragraphs of an email. They want a short and sweet. And I, I send a short and sweet email mm. and it's like a one sheet and this is like sums me up and, and that's been working really good. Uh, the second part of the tip is I've been enticing hosts with promotions. So that's the other thing they want to know, Hey, how much of an audience do you have? That's the biggest question when it comes to, having great guests on your show as well as getting on great shows. Mm -hmm. And I, I solve that problem with big guests that I have on my show. And when I want to get on a show by doing something very simple, that's been working. And that's by guaranteeing the host X number of uh, Facebook posts uh, reach or impressions mm -hmm. and, and, and clicks potentially. So, 
for example, I, I got on the last podcast, I got on, I ran a promotion and I'll do this worldwide to just English speaking people, people that like other uh, self-help people like uh, Tony Robbins. So that's my niche more in self-help space. So mm -hmm. I say Tony Robbins, Brendan Bouchard, yeah. Tim Ferriss, these kinds of things, right? And I'm able to get um, my last promotion. I got, uh, I think, close to 70,000 impressions, 45,000 reach, and like over 600 clicks on a post. And it only cost me $10. Oh. So, so I, I've been able to use this formula to then say in my email, it says, hey, by the way, I will guarantee you 30,000 views of this post on Facebook. Wow. So then that's more enticing than just someone else saying, Hey, I'd love to have you on your show. Even if we have like the yeah. same resume, right? It's like, all right, yeah. who are you, who are you going to pick? Right. So that's another really cool trick. That's helped me get, get on some uh, decent shows recently. Yeah. That's, that's super helpful for, for me and for everyone who has a podcast too. Um, we should have one on, yeah, promoting podcasts too, because it looks like you have some pretty good strategies there too. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, but yeah, I agree. I think it's such a great promotion tool. Um, we're merging books and audio, actually. What do you think of audio books? Did you publish yours as an audio book? No, I didn't. And I'm a huge fan of them. And I, I have, I have like one I did myself and I, I kind of handed out in the back end on my website, but I didn't put it out on Audible. Um, but I, I, I've just been so busy. I guess that's probably an excuse as well, but I totally believe in audiobooks. I, I almost exclusively listen to audiobooks nowadays Same. because <laughs> I'm like always on the move. I'm either handling my kids or I'm working out or whatever, right? So that that's just a such a great way to listen to books that and I can get through a book very very quickly whereas I feel like if I sit down and read it it just doesn't um you know, it takes me a little longer to get through it. Yeah, I, w I was the same, like um, when we, with the revenue from the book in the next months, I want to hire a narrator and put it on Audible because I'm the same, like most of the books I read, I should listen to. Yeah, I think uh, it's probably way less competitive too. So uh, uh, I don't have experience in it, but from, yeah, just uh, common sense, I would definitely recommend people to think about the audio version. Yep. Yeah, I've been torn a little bit about hiring somebody because the, the audiobooks I love the most are read by the authors themselves. Mm, true. And so I know sometimes you don't, you don't feel confident or you might feel like you might make a mistake. But if, if I were to recommend it to anybody, I think it comes across more authentically and yeah. just you can, you can connect better with the author because they, they lived it, they wrote it. Um, yeah. So that'd be the other, the other tip uh, I'd recommend. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have do you have other tips like this on the top of my, your mind for people who want to publish a book? I mean, I think the other big part, and you kind of brought it up already, what I see people stumbling across when when they're especially about to launch their book is they fail to realize how much momentum and effort it takes to get a, get a book launched successfully. They, you know, it's, it, there is a lot of work just to get your book written and all the little details there. But uh, I, I see people make the mistake of one, they don't have a launch team. Um, and the launch team you want to have probably two to even three months before you actually say, hey, I'm going to get this out there. And, and a launch team is just there to support you through marking your book once it's out with mm -hmm. your, with their audience and helping you get reviews on Amazon, which are like hugely critical, I think to, you know, everybody on Amazon is like, hey, you know, how many reviews does this thing have? And they mm. want to see that. Um, so that's, you know, one of the first uh, week, the first, before it was actually out, I had basically run a free promotion. It was kind of like a silent promotion that I just did to my launch team for a couple of days. And that way they could download the book from Amazon. And they, they had already kind of gotten the book ahead of time, but if you download it, you kind of get seen as a purchased, uh, you know, purchased uh, reviewer of your book. Mm. So they downloaded it, reviewed the book, and, you know, before my official launch, which was um, just a couple of days after that, then I already had, you know, a dozen five-star reviews of my book. So then when it went live, it, it was able to gain that momentum, I think, more more easily. Mm. So that's that's another great thing and then they can help promote it even after and they could be the ones even helping you get on these podcasts you know it takes some work and i've gotten it to a way that i've been able to automate emails and send some emails that 
help me get on shows more easily. So you don't necessarily have to leverage people, but mm. anyway, you need some manpower a lot of times to do these things and, and your, your launch team can really help you do that. Um, so that's, that's uh, some more tips I would, I would help. I, th I think from a ongoing review process, the other thing that I'm actually doing, um, you might be interested in Alex, uh, is I'm creating a platform that will allow authors and podcasters to get reviews on iTunes and Amazon. Uh, and they yeah. do that by getting on the website and swapping reviews. Essentially you review mm. something it, it's called review karma. So you get some good karma by reviewing somebody else's book and you use that karma to request a review of your book mm. and, and or podcast if, you know, so you can review a podcast or a book. And then at the end, you have the option to sort of connect with the, the podcaster. Uh, if you're an author or if you are a podcaster, you can say, hey, I love this author. I'd like to invite them on my show. So I think that's something that's been missing, at least from all the work that I've been doing, an easy way mm. to get reviews on a consistent, ongoing basis and not just say, because I had my reviews for a long time and like they're the same reviews and they're just very difficult to get, right? And there's some sites out there you can pay $70 for a review or something silly, right? Mm. Like that most authors just, it's not worth it. Right. And, and so this, hopefully this platform can really help yeah. uh, see the gap in the marketplace right now. Yeah. Um, I think that's what I told you when you sent me that list of podcasts and um, it's like, I definitely think there's a big gap there. Like there's like so many people I know, that kind of doing little things and getting lists of podcasts trying to reach out, but not like I haven't come across a proper platform. Maybe I haven't searched well enough, but yeah, there's definitely so much value in what you're doing. Thank you for the list and yep. in creating such a platform where people can give to each other. Um, yeah, that's, that's super exciting project. I think yeah, from I'll, there I'll, you I'll, could also do a, have you thought about doing a course? Also? About uh, doing what, sorry? Pub, a, a course about publishing like an online course, taking you step by step. Yeah, so uh, maybe I didn't tell, tell you that. I have a, a domain, it's called Write a Book University. So I, I have a course already yeah, uh, okay. that walks people through a lot of this stuff. I, some of it, uh, I'm keeping it updated as I go, like especially with the podcasting as I really dove, you know, dived into that in the last four or five months, you know, and um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I have some members there and I am trying to grow that platform. I just launched that this year. Cool. Exciting. Um, also, I'm just curious about, uh, cause I'm always curious about my guest in general. What was the um, holistic approach you used to heal yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned it, the, the disease that I was diagnosed with was called Crohn's and it's a stomach, bowel disorder, disorder um, can be pretty debilitating. I was waking up basically with flu-like symptoms every single day at my worst. And mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, just, I grew up really feeling like uh, I was very self-taught and actually homeschooled for quite a while. And maybe that really helped me through this because I felt like, hey, I, I need to find some answer, answers. And, you know, with, with all the information we have today, we're so blessed to have it. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing some research. I found a specific doctor and some, a few forums, and I had to do a lot of, a lot of research because there's really not a lot of people that have done this, uh, you know, prescribed processes to take some immune suppressants that immune, you know, suppress your immune system. So if you do get other infections, the, they can be very serious. Mm -hmm. So that really scared me. And I found a doctor that, uh, his name is Dr. Hyman, Mark Hyman. So if anybody has anything like this, they can uh, look him up. I'm obviously not a doctor, but he had a great detox process that I went through. It was like a 10 day detox and it was a lot of food elimination. Basically you got down to drinking like vegetable broth, like you mm. all these best vegetables and you just boil them and you drink the broth and um, other, other things. But he, and then after that, a lot of the diet that he recommends is very low inflammation. So a lot of our bodies are very, um, you know, we have, we have a pH in our body, right. And they can yeah. get very acidic. You know, there's a lot of foods that cause acidity, whether that's alcohol mm. or tomatoes and certain, certain yeah. types of food that cause our bodies and our, you know, when we get acid reflux, right. That's because of the foods we're eating and yeah. our body's pH is off. 
And, and so I, I took his advice. I, I used the diet that he had proposed. And a lot of one thing that I was having trouble getting past was that he recommended 75% of your food should come from fruits and vegetables. And I was like, I, I hadn't consumed that type of diet before. And it was very challenging for me at first. And so some of the other forms that I saw recommended, and I, I had seen a, I remembered a uh, documentary that, that I'd watched. Um, it was, um, I forget, it was like Reboot with Joe. Uh, he had gone on like a 60 day fasting diet, uh, juice fasting diet. Mm. And he had all these conditions, taking all his medicine. And basically at the end, he, he was, didn't have mm. to take his medicine anymore, you know? And so that really struck me after, you know, I had watched that a few years prior. And, and so combined with the forms that I listened, I had seen around basically juicing and blending, and mm. they're different. I, I just went on a crazy, like 60 day after that, I went like a crazy 60 day juice fast and just allowed my body to heal itself and not have to worry about yeah. digesting food and just absorbing okay. tons of nutrients. And then from there, I just, I like when I told you that I'd walked into the doctor, or I, I basically had walked to the doctor's office when I had uh, been diagnosed only a few months or a month later, I got an actual appointment with the gastroenterologist and I told him, Hey, I don't have any symptoms. And he couldn't believe it. You know, he was like, wow, mm. whatever you're doing it up. And uh, that's yeah. how, that's how I started slowly introducing food that's back cool. into my diet. And I, 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 I'm not so restricted now. I do a lot of juicing and blending still, but it, and there's certain supplements I also, you know, took, but at the end of the day, a lot of it was just very, very natural. Yeah, that's interesting. I ask you because I know a lot of the listeners in this podcast, they're interested in the business side of things, but a lot into health. I've had people fasting for 40 days, um, healing a lot of things. So, yeah, um, yeah I think a, a, a good one I like to follow is Dr. Gregor. He's a big proponent of plant-based diet, but he shows how nutrition reverses a lot about diseases instead of yep. pop, popping a pill as a, <laughs> as a western medicine taught us so, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely it's really interesting how can people follow you yeah so and buy your book <laughs> yeah for sure uh so if you go to write a book university.com you can uh write a book university.com forward slash free you can get a free four lesson video course to start you on your journey to write your book so if you're interested in that also, uh, you know, my books on writeabookuniversity.com, you, there's links there or on Amazon. It's called Conquest, 10 Simple Steps to Conquer Life and Leave a Lasting Legacy. And if you just look at my name on Amazon, Aaron Gendel, you can find me. Otherwise, I'm on Daily Authors. I interview authors, credible authors like yourself, Alex, every single day. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you can check it out on, you know, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or any of those. Nice. And thank you so much. I can feel you're a giver. I really encourage people to follow you because you're a very genuine person who's trying to help. So thank you so much. And just to finish in maybe a sentence, uh, how would you describe the impact you want to have in the world? Yeah, I want to help as many people as possible leave a lasting legacy. Boom. <laughs> I vibe with that. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you so much to everyone who listened to this podcast. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show, man.